Hi guys, Lewis from Hummingbird here with just a quick tutorial, probably 15 minutes or so, on how to apply for your PFCO. As most of you are aware now, the CA have kindly given us a, a brand new form rather than paperwork to fill in. Uh, this replaces the SRG1320, uh, which is now only used for operational safety cases. Um, when you get to this page, hopefully you've come through the student login, you found this page all via the CA website. Um, you get a tracking number which you can write down and then you can track your application uh, at a later date or you can save it and come back to it if you need to step away from the computer or, or whatever. On the first page, general terms of use, uh, give it a read. If you're, you know, make sure you're happy with everything from the CA. Uh, you have to be, otherwise you don't get a PFCO. Um, if you need help, there's an email address here or a phone number over here. Uh, give them a ring. They don't bite. They're really friendly. Um, or give myself uh, an email, Matt or Helen, and one of us will help you out the best we can. Um, once you're happy with this, click Accept. Okay, And before you begin, you need to confirm that this e application is for an unmanned aerial system standard permission, which it is, and confirm you are over the age of 18. And then click Continue. Applicant details. So it's going to give you an e Individual, limited company, charity, MOD, so forth. We're going to. Ch you need to choose what's relevant to you. Okay. For the purpose of this, we're going to select individual. However, if you uh, select limited company, it will ask you more details uh, that is specific to a limited company, such as company registration number, business address, and you know so on. For the purpose of this, we're going to uh, keep it as an individual because uh, that's what probably what you know 70, 80 percent of our students are. When you select individual, we're going to look at now um, putting some details in. So we're going to call ourselves Mr. And we're going to be Mr. Max uh, Max Wolf. Yeah, let's call ourselves Mr. Max Wolf. And we're going to be training as Wolf Drones. Okay. Important in this bit, whatever you put in here, and if you put a trading name in, uh, later on, when you get your insurance certificate, it needs to be identical. We can't stress that enough because they will reject your whole application if your names do not match. So, for example, here we've got Max Wolf trading as Wolf Drones. So our insurance certificate needs to be Max Wolf trained, trading as Wolf Drones. Okay, If it just says Wolf Drones, they will not accept it. Okay, It needs to be identical to this uh, you need to put your address in so this is your uh, business address as such for a sole trader or your personal address if you're a, a you know an individual uh, an individual on your own uh, let's put a random postcode in uh, let's choose number one if you can't find your postcode obviously use manual entry it's not a problem uh, let's put a random phone number in okay uh, you don't need mobile, don't need fax. Email must be the email address that you want your PFCO sending to. Okay, or all CAA correspondence will go to that. So we're going to be max at wolfdrones.com and we're going to repeat that wolfdrones.com. You can put your website in there, you don't have to. Um, completely up to you. Okay. Uh, correspondence address. If you want any mail from the CAA uh, or you know other relevant parties to do with the CAA, uh, I've never actually received anything. But just in case, you know, you can opt there to change your address if you wish. Uh, you'll do that by selecting yes here. Uh, but for the purpose of this, we don't need to change the address. We're happy with that, so we're going to click no, and then continue. Okay, so on this page, this is the start of your application. 99% um, of first-time people will not be asking for a duplicate permission because it is your initial application, so we will leave that selected as no. Or you can always look at the little help bars if need be. Hover over it and it gives you some information. Is this the initial application? It's going to be if you're watching this video and listening to me drone on, no pun intended. Um, we're going to be, a for the purpose of this, a 7 kilo or less multi-rotor. Um, if you are 7 to 20, uh, you would select this as well, or both. Okay. Uh, for the purpose of this as well, we're going to have one drone. If you put you have two, it will ask you to state further on in the manual that you've got what your serial numbers are for each drone and the type and so on. If you've put night in your manual, which is sections 11.4, um, 
your emergency procedures, uh, a night checklist and the reference at the rear of the manual in the appendices, um, select this here. If you haven't put night, don't select it because if you do and you haven't got it in your manual, they won't allow your application. You'll have to you'll have to redo this form, okay, before they'll even process it. So for the purpose of this, we're going to say yes, we have put night in our manual. It's been approved by Hummingbird, um, so it's good to go. So once we once we select that, it's going to ask us to confirm that the manual includes your night operations procedures, and then click continue. Remote pilots. So are all your remote pilots listed in your operations manual? I would assume yes. If you're flying on your own, it would just be yourself. If you're just starting a company or a, you know a sole trading company and you have three pilots who've all been through the course and so forth, you would select no and then it would... it would. Uh, so you'd still select yes, uh, but then you'd list them anymore. If you select no, it won't let you continue your application. Okay. Um, so you're going to confirm that all the remote pilots meet the uh, competency requirements for the permission. So that would be doing exactly what you guys have done: the ground school, the op the and the, the uh, sorry the theory course and the flight assessment. They don't need to do an ops manual if they're uh, become you know going under yours. Okay. Uh, so number of current pilots been authorized on the permission. If you've got three pilots, put three. If it's just you, just put one. Read the spool here. Um, some useful information there. And then click next. So remote pilot number one. Uh, this was uh, Max Wolf, I believe. Um, so is Max uh, the chief pilot? Okay, um, he is because there's only me, so it would be yes. If not, if you put no, it will ask you to put someone else's details in. Okay, your remote flying experience. So you literally, it is what it says. Just put down, uh, I have uh, 30 hours hobbyist, I can't even spell, hobbyist flying time, and this has all been on various sub-7 kilogram drops. Literally, you have to put, just put whatever, you, whatever experience you've got put in there, okay? So your qualification arising from this is going to be the NQE full category course. Okay, this is what you guys have done. If you have done the fast track course, it would be this. If you've already got a PPL or a, you know a, um, an aviation qualification, it would be uh, the second one. But if you've done both days on the course, you're going to choose the top one. So the name of the NQE was ourselves. So that would be uh, Hummingbird. Uh, UAV. Uh, now it's going to ask you to upload the certificates. Okay, so when you've done all three elements of the course, which would be your ground school, your operations manual, and your flight assessment, uh, we'll then issue you with a full category uh, recommendation. Okay, so we're going to just upload that. Yep, it shows there as done. Um, do you need to delete? Um, Sorry, you can delete your uh, remote pilot if you wish and start again, not a problem. Um, do you have any other documents as evidence uh, as competency or qualification? Okay, so it would be no. This is outside the UK, so if you've got a uh, an Irish uh, aerial license, for example, uh, you'd put yes and put it in there. Um, but for the purpose of this, not many people have, so it would be a no. I click continue. So your operations manual. Okay, we tell you on the course, keep it at version 1 until you get your PFCO, so we're going to put 1.0 in there. The date of the operations manual, whatever you've put in your f initial uh, amendment table within the manual, um, date-wise, you need to put the same date. Okay, they will reject your application if you don't. So for the purpose of this, we're going to put today's date, uh, 2018. Okay, change there. Um, now you need to confirm that it's been signed. Hopefully, your manual's been audited and we've changed your signature so it's correct. It needs to be a scanned copy of a penned signature. Okay, they won't allow font-based Comic Sans uh, signatures and so forth. Okay, so it has to be a proper penned, scanned in, and an image, a JPEG or a PNG, in your ops manual. 
the what what uh, issue year of the air navigation orders does your manual supply to? So it is 2016. Okay, that's the latest one out. It'll only let you not put numbers in there, uh, no letters. Okay. Um, so we need to confirm here that um, all your AS under the permission listed uh, in the supplied current operations manual uh, include we include the manufacturer, the type, the model, uh, maximum takeoff weight, command and control frequencies, etc. So that would have been audited in your manual. So we're going to tick yes. Uh, does the operations manual supplied include a section on policy relating to the reporting of accidents uh, to the AIIB? And this is this is to do with mandatory. Uh, reporting procedures okay that is already in the template you've hopefully done so we're going to do yes and now it's time for us to upload our manual so we're just going to put our template there upload it uh, and do you need to upload any a second document so if you have more than one volume like an osc or um, you know you've done a, a two or three different drones that require you know massive changes in the manual you could do it in volumes but for the purpose of this we're going to select no it's just one operations manual job done okay so we're going to select no now we're going on to move on to insurance okay insurance is a big thing with the caa again your name has to match uh, your the operations manual so if you're trading as company it has to be you know max drones trading as wolf drones um, if you just put max drones or wolf drones they won't allow it it has to have the trading name in as well it has to be 785-2004 compliant. Um, if you read the spiel here, it'll, it'll uh, tell you exactly what you need. But if you've gone through Flock, who issue a cover note for a year, or Moonrock, Cover Drone, uh, and so forth, they all are 785-2004 uh, compliant. Okay, So for the, we're going to choose uh, Moonrock as our insurer. Okay. Um, now, is your insurance valid at the start of your application? You need to choose yes. If you choose no, it won't let you progress. Okay. So, have an insurance policy in place before you fill out this form. Okay. You need you need a cover note. Okay. So we're going to choose yes. So the date of the expiry. Let's do it. Say a year from today. So twenty fifth oh four nineteen. Uh, is it continuous or per flight only basis? If you're using Flock, which are a pay as you go, or Cover Drones pay as you go option, um, you need to obviously in your checklist it will say check for insurance. Okay, so if you're using one of them, um, put per flight only basis, or if you have a full annual policy where you've paid one lump or a direct debit over a year, let's uh, continuous uh, oh, correct dating there there we go so does your insurance cover any UAS operated by the applicant um, or is it just one have you got three drones for example but your your insurance only covers your Inspire and not your Phantom for, for example um, most of them will cover all you've got okay so we're going to select that is the application shown um section the applicant details feature on the insurance name so this is about the um the name okay so it has to be the same i know i've been repeating myself here again for the third time but if your max drones trading as wolf drones on your insurance certificate on your cover note it must say max drones trading as wolf drones okay otherwise they will not um not accept it um, you need to then confirm it is 785-2004 compliant. If it doesn't say on your cover note, give your insurance company a ring uh, and just make sure it is. Otherwise, it's going to cause you problems down the line. Okay. Uh, and then we need to in we need to upload an insurance certificate. So for the purposes, we're just going to upload this, our certificate again. Okay. But you would put your cover note or your insurance documents in there. Okay. We've got an error there, so it's continuous. Um, and we'll try again. So charges, um, you've confirmed that you understand the charges. Okay, so for your initial application, it's now two hundred and forty-seven pounds, um, which is good because before we had to trawl through thousands of pages looking for how much a drone, you know, application or renewal was. Um, um, so yeah, it's ten times easier. Okay, 
Uh, are you going to pay the charges yourself or someone else? If you select no, it'll ask you to put a billing address in for a different person uh, or a different address. Um, but for the purpose of this, we're just going to choose yes. Okay. So the person who would be paying would be Max Wolf. Okay. So his telephone number again is that. His email address is max at wolfdrones.com. Max at wolfdrones.com. Okay, and now click continue. Um, and now it's going to ask you uh, to select your payment type. However, that is as far as I can, I can take you, I'm afraid, because it's going to ask me for card details. And for the purposes of just showing you this, I don't want to pay £247. Um, so, uh, oh, just one last thing there. Well, if you've got a purchase order, for example... Uh, PO one if you need to. Sorry, right, that's the last um that's your last details. Uh yeah, we have to confirm that. Uh, and then you're gonna submit your document, okay? We're not gonna submit the document because obviously for the purpose of this it was just a test. Um, but I hope you guys found this useful. Uh, so if you have any issues filling out your form, whether it be limited company, sole trader, MOD, uh, and so forth, please get in touch with either the CEA or give us a, a call. Um, myself, Matt or Helen can help you. Um, or if you know if one of us is not available, we'll pass it on to whoever can help you. Okay, or we'll ring the CEA or whatever. Okay, well, thank you very much uh, and hope to see you guys again soon. Cheers.